Hey guys, welcome to the Old Ultra Runner channel. I'm your host, Jay Tynert, and today I wanted to talk about preventing chafing. Uh, chafing uh, has hit most of us that have run long distances over the years, no doubt about it. Uh, I feel like I have some experiences uh, in this, especially starting running in the late 80s. Uh, there was, we mostly ran in cotton t-shirts. There weren't all the the nice things to prevent chafing that there are today. Uh, so I've definitely had the early on the bloody nipples. I've had lots of chafing in my upper thighs. Uh, I've had the sensation of getting in the shower and feeling the pain. <laughs> uh, I have worked a lot over the years to find what works for me. And now I, I actually do the, the long fixed time races and it has found it an advantage in that I can normally take care of myself and not have major chafing issues. Uh, so I just wanted to share a few tips of what works for me. Uh, I will say everybody's body's different, so the parts of your body that, that chafe on you are probably the chafe and the clothing we wear is different. Uh, I'll start off with just talking about my feet. Um, I do believe in the old adage that you should get your shoes in a larger size uh, where you have probably your thumbs thumbs width to the end of the toe to the end of the from your toe to the end of the shoe available so you're not rubbing up against the toe I will say as you do that you want it to still be tight through the midfoot fit the heel well where it's not slipping but you can buy it an extra half size or size larger and get to where you have some toe space. I also, just me personally, I have found that I prefer shoes with a wider toe box because it allows my foot to splay without it rubbing up against the sides and causing friction there. Uh, it also allows, as I do these super long events, the, my 24, 48 hours, 50 mile or stuff like that, it allows my feet to swell some and still have uh, some room in there. and. Uh, as my feet swell, sometimes then, since I've got it locked down tight across the midfoot, it, that'll get tight. But that, that you can usually solve by just loosening the laces a little bit. Um, I also find that getting a good quality pair of socks that helps reduce friction uh, helps. I've made a separate video about my favorite socks. Uh, there are lots of good brands out there, though. You just need to find what works for you. Um, in, just in short, my favorites are up to 10 miles, I run in fit socks. Uh, above 10 miles, I tend to put on toe socks because the having the tight, uh, tight material against your toes causes there not to be much friction. There isn't friction between your toes and uh, it really cuts down on, on chafing. I have also found that once I'm running a marathon or longer, I will usually put a uh, thin layer of of a uh, lube on my feet. You don't want it too thick or your feet are like sliding around all in the sock and the shoe, but if you put a thin layer, it helps add a little extra protection against blisters and chafing. Um, and I usually have found that if I put one layer on it and then put on the toe socks, it pretty well lasts me all day. So that's it for my thing on feet. As far as other chafing, uh, like I said, we started off with cotton shirts. Uh, I have found that usually you have less chafing if you wear the new, newer sort of technical shirts that are more of a blend. Uh, they tend to chafe less. One of the other big areas I've had trouble with chafing was like in my nipple area. Um, and I started off years ago, there really weren't many choices. A lot of people just ran without shirts. You'll still pe see people doing that. That will prevent the chafing. Uh, but again, you're, it's just if you're comfortable running without a shirt, I kind of like the protection of a shirt in the summer from the sun. Uh, I like staying warmer in winter. So I, I prefer wearing a shirt. So um, early on, I tried using Vaseline because that's what was available. But Vaseline would, would uh, stain your shirt and you'd end up with these huge, it looked like uh, huge uh, circles on your shirt, which wasn't very pleasant and they wouldn't come out. So uh, they have improved things. They, uh, the next thing I tried, I learned about people using uh, cow udder butter 
and you could find uh, commercial brands that were like called Simply Smooth and things like that that you could get that were a little bit better. They would, uh, they definitely worked better. They didn't didn't stain your shirt as much, uh, and they lasted longer. But you still had to reply reapply fairly often. Uh, the next thing that I kept hearing about was um, Body Glide that came out in a little stick form. Um, the stick you would apply, and a lot of people still use that and find it very much sufficient and it works great for them. Uh, I'm uh, don't use body glide that much because I have found it just doesn't for my super long runs and how long I how much I sweat I find I have to reapply it pretty often uh, but it's still much better than the options of the utter butter or the Vaseline or anything like that and it is definitely convenient to just get out a stick and use it uh, I do have a what I have here is gold bond friction defense I have found it works about the same as body glide I keep it in my bag just for a quick uh, bit of lube and I'll use this quite often. Well, from time to time. Um, not really quite often because normally what I'll do in a, before a long run is I'll put on a, a lube and uh, I put it down my upper thighs. I put it in what I, my private bits. My I call it my undercarriage. Uh, if I have any places where I think the uh, my pack might rub I'll put a little bit there and uh, I normally am using a brand called Sport Slick just because I discovered it many years ago and it has worked really well for me and I find it a little bit more economical than uh, it's a little bit cheaper than some of the newer brands which are also awesome uh, like I've, I've also owned Trail Toes which is a good brand uh, also there is Squirrels Nut Butter which is an excellent brand um, one thing I have found out about Sport Slick is if you're, it, it works great, I apply it, and it lasts a long time, and I can occasionally reapply it, but I don't have to very often. I can usually put it, apply it one time before a 50 mile race, and I'm usually pretty set. Uh, I'll usually have it in a drop bag, so if I need to reapply, I can, but I normally don't have to. Uh, it stays on good when it gets wet. Um, it stays pretty good through sweat. Eventually it'll wear out. So like if I do a 24 hour race, I'll do it maybe after sometime during the night or, or late at night, I'll replay, I'll re up, but it, it'll last me for several hours. Uh, same thing goes with trail toes. But what I was gonna say about Sport Slick, the only thing is with this container, I have found that if the temperature drops below 40 degrees, this thing will freeze and you can't get it out of the tube. <laughs> so, uh, I have found that using uh, like trail toes or squirrel's nut butter comes in this sort of thing where you just scoop it out. Uh, I can usually get it out of here even in a little bit cooler temperature. Uh, these companies all also usually make something that comes in a tube that's kind of like the body glide or the gold bond that'll have holes in it, kind of like a gel uh, antiperspirant where you unscrew it and it shoots some out. And I think that's what they actually recommend if the temperature gets cold. Uh, I actually have some of that for Sport Slick, but I misplaced it, so I don't have it to show you as an example. Uh, the last thing I can uh, show is, is I have found for my nipple area, <laughs> uh, there's a lot of friction and I wear through it. And you can and the uh, trail toes, the sport slick works pretty well. You, are, I do have to reapply that more often if I'm using it there. But I, I several years ago started trying to put, uh, tried different things like covering it with tape. Uh, but the tape would always wear off when it would get cold, and when it would get wet, uh, or when I'd sweat a lot. And then I tried band aids, and the band aids at first were catching my hair, and I would be pulling them off and. Uh, it was kind of painful. So then I started buying little spot band-aids and those worked pretty well. Uh, they would stay on but um, and they would last for quite a while. Uh, the only issue I had is it, in a really long event or where I sweated a lot, if I ever did come off, they, you had to be a really dry surface for them to stick again. <laughs> so if, if I ever did lose a band-aid, uh, I had trouble getting one back on without taking a good rest and somehow managing to get dried off where I wasn't sweating too much. But what I have found works really great for me is I buy this uh, Transpore, it's a surgical tape that 3M makes. 
Uh, I buy it off of Amazon. I've also found it at, at a local pharmacy near me that sells uh, some medical supplies. This stuff is awesome because it's, I just tear off a little piece. Uh, I can cover my nipple. It, it stays on really well when it gets wet. It stays on through all the sweat. Um, but it's still not that hard to pull off. It's not real painful. So this stuff is awesome. I would also consider this for people that aren't real, don't have too much body hair like I do. If you're wearing clothing, I'm thinking of females wearing a undergarment that might chafe them. I'm thinking that this might be a good thing to put along your skin where the chafing would happen and it would stop the chafing from occurring. Uh, but again, you just find what works for you. It could be the body glide, it could be uh, one of the thicker body lubes like sport slick or uh, trail toes or uh, squirrels nut butter. Uh, you just want to find what works for you. Anyway, that is it for my uh, tips on what I use for preventing chafing. I hope you found something useful. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. If you are interested in more of this sort of content, please subscribe. Uh, and other than that, just keep moving.